Modern technology is playing an increasingly important role on the front lines, as evidenced by a video released by the Ukrainian unit UA underscore REG team, which shows how a ground robotic complex armed with a machine gun drove the Russians from their positions in the Kursk region. OSINT analysts specify that this is an attack on a position of Russian troops in the settlements of Volfino in the Glushkovsky district. A ground drone supported by a mortar fired at the enemy position. The Russians try to fight off the attack of the robotic platform using RPGs and FPV drones, but to no avail. As a result, the enemy had to leave this position with losses. The other day, the head of the GUR, Kirill Budinov, predicted a multiple increase in the number of ground robots in the war in a year. In an interview with The Economist, the head of the military intelligence said that it is now possible to talk about a new stage in the war when ground robotic platforms have entered the battle. However, they are only making themselves known so far. Their number will increase many times over the current calendar year. Recall back in May, Ukrainian developers revealed a new armed ground robot, the Fury. Four months later, a Fury has fought and reportedly won the type's first major skirmish. On or just before Thursday, one of the four-wheeled shopping cart-sized Furies assaulted a trench in Russia's Kursk Oblast, according to Forbes. Dodging mines and firing its machine gun in coordination with explosive drones and mortars, the bot defeated a small group of Russian soldiers. The Fury is one of several armed, unmanned ground vehicles Ukrainian engineers have developed in the 30 months since Russia widened its war on Ukraine and one of the first types to see major combat. A Fury has four wheels, a radio for receiving operator commands, video cameras and a remotely aimed machine gun. It's thickly built, with armor plates protecting its most vulnerable components. Simply reaching a battlefield is a big challenge for an unmanned ground vehicle to say nothing of doing anything useful once it arrives. The Fury's developers wisely emphasized mobility and gave their bot big wheels a low center of gravity and a high chassis with plenty of ground clearance. A UAV operator at the Border Commandment's Office of the Rapid Response of the 7th Detachment of the State Border Service of Ukraine, Vladimir Semkiv, who took part in the defense of Vovchansk said that the tactics of the Russians in the Kharkiv region have changed. As he told Novinana in an interview, the enemy infantry moves in small groups that hide in the greenery. Although in the beginning, according to him, the Russians carried out assaults in large detachments and could walk around the area openly. It seemed that they were convinced of their own success, their own impunity or they simply did not care about their own lives. They went to a fortified position at full height in broad daylight, moving along open roads. They suffered losses and later we saw that the tactics were changing. The Russians were camouflaging themselves more, moving in smaller groups, the soldier said. He recalled that the Russians' successes in their direction did not last long. In fact, they were struck in the same positions that they had managed to capture in the first days of the breakthrough and they burned a hell of a lot of their equipment there, killed a sea of their people. My good friend told me about a battle. Their group shot a Russian and he started calling his own for help. A fellow soldier ran up to him, pulled the pin out of the grenade and saying, this fighter is going to God, put the grenade under the wounded man's head, Semkiv said. In his opinion, they are either not friends with life or they are too friends with death. This is some kind of Russian satanic drive. Reporters and aid groups have little or no access to hospitals or rehabilitation centers in Russia. Information is scarce, often limited to community news reports and telegram channels. The Kremlin, military analysts and some medical personnel say wants to avoid a repeat of the anti-war movements that forced a halt to earlier wars in Chechnya and Afghanistan. The Russian state has learned by experience that if it wants to maintain domestic stability, it should suppress that kind of debate, said Nick Reynolds, a research fellow for land warfare at the Royal United Services Institute, a London-based military think tank. Military analysts say the high number of wounded also reflects the striking indifference that Russia exhibits towards its soldiers as it sacrifices huge numbers to make small gains across the 600-mile front in Ukraine.
The Russian leadership on every level does not care much about soldiers, said Pavel Luzin, a Russia military expert with the Center for European Policy Analysis, a Washington-based research group.